Hello, my name is Julia Ide. I'm an admissions counselor here at Western Washington University. And I'm here today to share some information about Western with you, give you some more information in, to use in making your college decision. I'm gonna start off by talking about Western and Bellingham, just some general information if you're not too familiar with the university. And then we'll go into academics as well as student life and community here on campus. Then we'll move towards um, what we look for in an application as well as what that application process looks like. And we'll wrap things up talking about our honors program as well as ways you can contact us and find out more information. So we're in Bellingham, Washington. If you haven't had a chance to visit, I would really recommend uh, taking the trip up to Bellingham. It's a beautiful city. It's a population of about 83,000 people. So it's uh, just the right size. You don't feel that you're in a small college town bubble. There's still plenty of things to do outside of campus, but you still get that great college community, Western community in town. We're about 90 miles north of Seattle, uh, so pretty convenient location, 45 minutes south of Vancouver, BC as well. If you wanna go out to the bigger cities to maybe experience some food, cultural events, maybe concerts, sporting events that Bellingham might not have, then it's convenient. You can go on, uh, go south or north on I-5 to get to one of those two cities and experience something a little bit different from Bellingham. But you get to still live in beautiful, peaceful, quiet Bellingham and enjoy a um, nicer, slower pace of life. We're about 60 minutes away from the Mount Baker ski area as well. If you like any kind of outdoor activity, then Bellingham has it. We were actually named an outdoor lover's paradise and it's really true. You can see in that picture there, we're right on the bay. We have the Sea Home Hill Arboretum right next to campus, which has about six miles of hiking trails, 60 minutes to Mount Baker ski area. So if you wanna go up and go snowboarding or just see the snow and build a snowman, then that's pretty easy to do as well. If you're the type that enjoys the outdoors from the indoors more than downtown Bellingham's a 15 minute walk from campus and there's great local coffee shops, uh, places to get food, bookstores. It's a great place to go explore. So if you do come to visit campus, I recommend adding some extra time into your schedule to go explore downtown as well and get a bite to eat. Of course, our location is one of the things that's most unique about Western, but what really makes us stand out is our academics. We have 175 different majors across our seven colleges, which you can see there. Uh, our Woodring College Ed of Education is one of our program colleges that we're really proud of. Uh, Western actually started um, back in the late 1800s as a teacher's college, and we really maintain that solid foundation in training teachers to the present day. We're very proud of Woodring. Huxley College of the Environment is also another one of our colleges that I want to tell you a bit about. Huxley was one of the first environmental colleges in the United States. So that's something that we decided um, quite a long time ago that the studying of environmental study, environmental sciences, environmental studies, sustainability was something that we wanted to prioritize as a university. And finally, at the bottom of that list, Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies. So Fairhaven College is a little bit different than the other colleges that we have on campus. In Fairhaven College, you have the option to design your own major. So if you look at our popular majors list, for example, take English. To get an English degree, there are certain classes that you have to take. It's determined by the department. There's not a lot of flexibility in there. In Fairhaven, you're completely in charge of your education. You work with an advisor, with faculty to design your own major. So if you're interested in um, any topics related to social justice, uh, you have an interdisciplinary interest that maybe doesn't quite match up with one of our majors, then I would encourage you to look into Fairhaven College as an opportunity for you to really be in charge of your education and make sure that your education best matches your specific interests. On that list, you can also see just some of our popular majors. Uh, just because a major isn't one of our more popular majors does not mean that it's not a fantastic program. All of our programs are unique in their own different ways. I wanna talk a bit about those pre-professional pathways that you see at the bottom. So for example, if you want to go to medical school or law school, we don't have a specific pre-med or pre-law major. Uh, you can study whatever you want. You can major in chemistry or environmental science, history, mathematics, it's really up to you. But the pre-professional pathways are there to serve as kind of a guideline for you in preparing for those uh, graduate programs after Western to make sure that you're getting core course, coursework done, that you perhaps are working on ways to improve your application outside of just uh, what you're doing in class. We also have our pre-healthcare um, advisor uh, that can work with you if you're interested in going into anything related to the medical profession. 
at some other universities, uh, some students students might not have access to pre-healthcare advising until their second or third year. But that's something that's available to you before you're even a student at Western. If you're just interested in learning more about pre-healthcare advising opportunities for students, different academic clubs relating to healthcare, then that will be available to you. Of course, we want you to do well in all of your classes, but we also agree that student uh, that being a student at Western isn't just about um, academics. There are we have a great student community on campus and we have a lot of opportunities for you to dive in and get involved in that student life and build your community here at Western. We have 250 different clubs. And when I say that there's a club for everybody, there's something anyone can be involved in. I really mean it. Clubs are open to all students and we have clubs that cover a huge variety of topics. We have about 16,000 students, so not too large, not too small, but there's just enough students that that means there's going to be at least a few other students that have similar interests as you. So clubs are a great way to get connected with those people. We have clubs that are focused on certain academic interests, such as chemistry club and psychology club, clubs for students interested in going into business, into health sciences, dentistry, as well as more uh, fun clubs like our Harry Potter Club is one of our largest clubs on campus. We have um, my personal favorite is Bigfoot Club where students go look for Bigfoot in the woods on weekends. So when I say there's something for everyone, there truly is. And again, going back to that 16,000 students, even if there might not be a club of those 250 that matches up to what you like to do, then you can get some other students together with that might be interested in that and apply for funding through our associated students and start your own club so that you can continue to do what it is that you enjoy to do. Another great way to get involved uh, with the students that are living around you in your residence hall is through residence hall activities. There's hall council that you can be a part of. It's great experience. Uh, if you want to get develop your leadership and event planning uh, skills, then that might be a great opportunity for you. The different residence halls on campus uh, put on different events throughout the year. One of the residence hall communities, for example, puts on a haunted house in the fall. Uh, our Fairhaven residence community puts on the Fairhaven Carnival in the spring. So there's always fun events that you can either get involved in the process of planning those events, running them, or just go um, attend and have a good time, meet other students that are living around you. The resource, resource and Outreach Programs Counseling Center and Career Services Center is something I want to take a bit of time to talk to you about. So our resource and outreach programs are available to students. We have our Queer Identity Center, our we're women's um, Queer Resource Center, Women's Identity Center, as well as other resources um, through that. And really, we want to make sure that whatever it is that you need um, to be successful on campus, to build your community at Western, and to have support, we want to make that available to you. We have our um, whole, it's the Western Hub of Living Essentials that helps students. We have a food pantry on campus to help students with food insecurity. Um, we also have various resources available to students um, to help with affirming identity, exploring identity. We have numerous identity-based clubs through our Ethnic Student Center, which is housed in our new Multicultural Center building. We just opened our Multicultural Center in October of this year. And the reason that we were able to get this important space on campus is through generations upon generations of students advocating in our Ethnic Student Center to create this space for students to come together on campus. We have identity-based clubs through our Ethnic Student Center, but they're open to all students. Perhaps you want to meet students with similar backgrounds of, um, to yourself, get to know others that might have similar experiences, or you want to learn about the experiences of others, then that's great as well. This is a space to come together to find community, find support, and it's a really amazing space that we have on campus. We also have our counseling center. They offer a variety of support resource resources for students as well, ranging from uh, workshops on healthy stress management techniques to checking in individually with the counselor to make sure that you're getting the support you need and as well as connecting you to whatever resources might best serve you. Our Career Services Center is another great resource we have available to both students and alumni. So this will be available to you even af years after leaving Western. They can help you prepare for interviews um, with job applications. They can even run mock interviews if you want a bit of practice in your interview skills. They also have a, um, our Career Closet, which is available to students um, if you need help with getting um, professional wear for interviews. Athletics and intramural sports are another great way to get involved on campus. You can choose to be a student athlete. It's a lot of hard work though. It's a lot of early morning practices, uh, 5 a.m. on the lake if you're on our rowing team. 
but you can also just choose to do an intramural sport as well if you're not quite sure if you want to be uh, make that commitment to be a student athlete. Intramural sports, you can sign up to um, create a team with other students and play against other students across the university. So that's a fun way to stay active, stay involved, and have a great healthy way to relieve some stress. Uh, we also have our Lakewood Boathouse Outdoor Center and Recreation Center, which I want to kind of lump together and talk about those. Our Lakewood Boathouse is on Lake Whatcom. It's about uh, 20 minutes away from campus. You can go out there and show your student ID and rent kayaks for the day, canoes. You can even take sailing classes out there if you'd like to learn how to sail. So if you want to explore the outdoors, then that's one way that you can kind of dip your toe in and have access to some instruction and equipment. Our outdoor center is another way that you can explore the outdoors and different outdoor activities that are available in the Bellingham area. Through the outdoor center, you can rent out equipment. So perhaps you want to try something new, but you're not sure if you want to make that investment in buying that equipment. You can just rent it out for a weekend. They also lead excursions. So you can, again, have that guidance, get some assistance in your first um, experience outdoors and then uh, rent equipment as you get more comfortable going out by yourself. Our recreation, recreation center is another great way to just stay active and stay fit. We also have, I think, the second largest hot tub in the state of Washington. So that's another, another reason to go visit that recreation center. Then going back to study abroad, we have a lot of study abroad opportunities available for students as well. Our education abroad office is available for students um, if you need help in that study abroad process from the beginning to looking for programs that might match up with your academic interests, looking for uh, different ways to fund going abroad. They can help you with that process through to once you actually go abroad. There's a mandatory safety class for all students prior to going abroad to make sure that you're prepared to handle any situations that might come up. So now that we've gotten you interested in Western, we've gotten you excited about applying, how do we get you here? And what do we look for in an application? So what do we look for when we review a student's application? Uh, we have we use a holistic application review process. We're not looking at any one factor because you are not just your grades. You're not just test scores or an activities list. You're a whole person. So we want to look at all of those things that make you you and that make you unique. We do look at academic performance. Of course, that is part of the equation. But we also look at your contributions to your community, and that can be your school community. It could be your cultural, uh, religious, greater community in the area that you live in. We want to see that you're involved and engaged. You can also, in the application, it's a great time to celebrate your achievements and all of the great things that you've accomplished, as well as um, info tell us about your diverse experiences. And if you want to hold on to that diverse experiences piece, we're actually going to talk about that um, a bit later in this presentation when we get to the scholarship section. So just hold on to that one. All right, so the application, it's an online application. You can find it on our admissions website. You'll fill out all your information as well as send us your transcripts. We do, for first year applicants, we need to see transcripts uh, from, the, from your ninth grade year all the way through the end of 11th grade. You'll also fill out your senior year schedule if you're applying in the fall of senior year. Obviously, you fill, that won't be on your transcripts. So just let us know what classes you'll be taking your senior year. We do also want to see your official SAT or ACT test scores. We um, are able to super score the SAT. So if you score really well in the math section on one test and you take it again and don't score as well, we'll take your best score from each section and compile them together to use your best possible to create your best possible score. And we'll use that in determining admission as well as our admissions based scholarships. Though, unfortunately, we're not able to super score the ACT at this time. We have made the determination for the Fall of, for fall of 2021 applicants that we will be test optional. This is a direct response due to COVID-19. Uh, and so this is specifically for fall of 2021. We have not made a decision. Um, this is not a decision that will be applying to 20, fall 2022 or later years. So just keep that in mind. So once you filled out your information, sent us your transcripts, your schedules, test scores, You'll also um, submit an activities list, which is one of my favorite parts of the application. The activities list, uh, going back to the previous slide, is that's where you tell us about your contributions to the community, where you can celebrate your achievements and accomplishments. So you, uh, it's really anything that you're involved in aside from just coursework. It can be school related, it can be involved in music, dance, theater, sports. Perhaps you're a leader in your school community or uh, com greater community as well. And that's the chance for you to show us what you're involved in. And it helps us to get a better idea of what matters to you as an individual, what you choose to spend your time on. 
Oftentimes students as well don't have a lot of time for extracurricular activities. Perhaps you have to work or you take care of family members. Please include that as well. That definitely takes up a lot of time. It's something that is important to you, one, another one of your responsibilities. So please do include that on your activities list and please don't stress about not having pages of activities. We really do want to look at depth um, in your activities. So even if you might not have as many activities, we do look at the level of involvement that you've had. Now, you'll also send us an essay. There are three prompts that you can choose to respond to. And the essay is really your chance to talk to us, your admissions counselor, the person that's reading your application, to get to know you, your goals, why you want to attend Western, how you feel prepared for college. So don't stress about your essay too much. I know it can feel very intimidating writing your college essay, but we do have a great resource to help you out with that. You can actually submit your essay to the admissions counselors before you even submit your application. I have I know I'm, I love reading students' essays. I'm happy to read that for you. Uh, and then um, maybe give you some feedback and send it back so that you can feel really comfortable when you submit your application. There's also the optional tell us more essay. If you had any other circumstances that you think we should know in your, when we look at your application that might not be shown in your transcripts or your activities list. For example, the example I always use is if you got pneumonia one year and you were really sick and you missed a month of school and your grades dipped, if we just see your grades dipped one quarter on an application, we might not really know what happened there. But if you can give us that context, we can better understand the whole picture and understand what other things might have been going on at that time. Letters of recommendation are also optional. If you'd like to send them in, then we're happy to read those. But if you're comfortable with your application without those, then no need to worry about that. Completely up to you. We also have a $60 application fee. We um, as well as need-based fee waivers. So we don't want the application fee to be something that causes you a lot of stress. We don't want that to be what, her, what prevents you from applying. So if you do need a fee waiver, there'll be an option for you to request that at the time you submit your application. And finally, apply early. So here we have our admissions deadlines. Our early action deadline is November 1st. If you do apply by that deadline, you'll hear a response by December 31st, as well as receive an expedited review for our admissions-based scholarships. So it's kind of win-win. You'll hear back on admission as well as scholarships sooner. But if you're taking more time, maybe you want to spend some extra, a few extra weeks really perfecting your essay, then go ahead and um, you can apply by our, our regular decision deadline, which is January 31st. You'll have plenty of time um, to work on your application and get that submitted. So I do encourage you to apply early to hear back sooner. All right, so transfer admissions. This differs a little bit from first year admissions. So again, that is an online application. You'll send us your transcripts from any colleges that you've attended, uh, as well as you can find more information to determine if you do need to send us high school transcripts. Uh, typically, students with less than 45 credits will need to send us high school transcripts as well. There's also an essay. The essay is a little bit different than the prompt for the first year students. So in transfer students, your essay will be more you writing about your academic goals, career goals, why you want to study, what your what topic you're interested in at Western. It helps us to better understand what preparation you have for your major, as well as why you want to go into that specific field. Again, you have that option for the tell us more essay if there, you think there's something else that we should know when we review your application. And uh, keep in mind, the deadlines are going to be different than the first year deadline. So for fall quarter, rather than a January 31st deadline, transfer students have a March 1st deadline. And for each quarter, the deadlines um, will, you can see the deadlines for each quarter below. All right, so now we're moving on to financial aid and funding your education. So here we have FAFSA and WAFSA um, at the top of the page. FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. WAFSA is the Washington application for uh, state aid for students that might not qualify for FAFSA. You don't fill out both forms, just one or the other. And if you need any help in determining which one is the right form for you to fill out, you can connect with your school counselor or connect with our financial aid office. And again, apply early. So that's going to open up on October 1st. And the priority deadline will be January 31st, which for first year students is also the deadline for our um, regular admission. So keep that date in mind, mark it on your calendar and make sure you get your application and financial aid uh, submitted by that date. So this is just a quick summary of the types of funding that you might receive through your FAFSA or WAFSA. So there's grants and the two types of grants you could receive are Pell grants, which are federally funded, as well as state need grants, which of course are state funded. You might also receive um, any combination of different types of loans, 
through your FAFSA. You can also choose to take out a private loan through your local bank or credit union. Um, that's not, though private loans aren't determined through FAFSA, so that will be up to you to then make that determination if you do want to take out additional loans. Work study can also be awarded to students through your FAFSA, um, through your financial aid award package. When you do go fill out your financial aid application, there will be a box to check to state that you would like to be considered for a work study. Make sure you check that box. If you do receive work study as part of your financial aid award, you still need to go find that on campus job. But we have our student employment website, which is a great resource for finding jobs on campus. You can filter by work study or non work study, as well as different kind of job. So that'll be something to use um, later on when you're looking for jobs on campus. Even if you don't receive work study as part of your financial aid, there are still plenty of opportunities to find employment on campus. We have about 3000 different student jobs on campus, ranging from our tour guides who work in our admissions office to delivering mail on campus to even being a kayak instructor through our outdoor center. So you'll have a lot of different opportunities uh, to find employment and help fund your education. You might also receive scholarships, which much more fun to talk about than loans. So we have a few different kinds of scholarships that you might receive. Um, we have our admissions based scholarships. So when you apply to Western, your application is for both your um, application to the university as well as for our scholarships. Nothing else you need to do to apply for these scholarships, you'll be automatically considered. So we have merit based scholarships that will be based on your unweighted GPA as well as SAT or ACT test scores. We are a WUI school. Uh, the Western Undergraduate Exchange, so students from WUI member states will automatically be considered for the WUI. There's nothing extra that you need to do. Um, and that's also going to be merit based, so based on unweighted GPA and test scores. We also have other scholarships that are geared specifically for out of state students, even if you're not coming from a WUI state. So if you remember earlier on the slide, what do we look for? Diverse experiences. So the Multicultural Achievement Program is where those diverse experiences come into play. You can choose to write your essay about your your application essay about your experiences with diversity and multiculturalism in your community, or you can choose to submit an additional essay if you'd like. Completely up to you. So in the Multicultural Achievement Program Scholarship, we're really looking for students that are engaged in their community and that you have seen a need in your community that you're actively doing something to address that. That can take a huge, um, that can take a lot of different uh, forms. There's no specific formula um, that we're that we want to see in the scholarship program. There's no specific type of involvement. But if you have something that you feel might qualify for you, that, you for this scholarship, then I would encourage you to make sure that you highlight that in your application. We also have our Leadership and Distinguished, Scholar, uh, Distinguished Scholars program. So if you have specific interest in a certain field in your application, um, if you mark that in your application, you may be invited to apply for one of these programs. Uh, there's nothing extra you need to do to be invited to apply. Um, so if we see certain indicators in your application, uh, then we'll invite you and you can then choose to apply for one of these programs. We have distinguished scholars programs for education, uh, engineering, STEM, biology, marine science. So there's a few different options available to you. Departmental scholarships are also available to you. Typically they're available to current students, sometimes also prospective. So it's good to look um, at the department that you're interested in to see what kind of scholarships that they might have that will become available to you at a future point, or they might already be available to you as a prospective, prospective student. Um, under the private scholarships heading on this page, we have the washboard.org and the collegeboard.org. These are great resources just to look for uh, extra scholarships, non-Western scholarships to apply for. The washboard.org is especially a great resource for Washington State students. They help to connect Washington students with Washington scholarship providers, so it's a bit smaller of an applicant pool. They're a bit less competitive than the collegeboard.org scholarships, which are available to all students across the country. So it's a great resource to help you in searching for scholarships and don't let think my best advice I can give you is don't let thinking that you might not receive a scholarship prevent you from applying. You don't know what that end result will be, so it is worth it to apply to those awards. We also have our scholarship center on campus um, as another resource for you there. You can check out their website. They have a list of scholarships that you might want to look through to see what you could qualify for. And they can also help you in that process of searching and applying for scholarships. So that's another resource that we have available to our students. So here we have a summary of the tuition and cost of attendance for Washington state residents as well as out of state students. For Washington residents, our tuition is $6,543 per year. We have the second lowest of the four-year uh, Washington State universities. 
So on the top of uh, this graph, you, or graphic, you can see our direct costs. The direct costs are the um, are billed directly to you from the university, and they're kind of a set price. There's not really fluctuation in that. So tuition, your fees, which includes your student activities fee, uh, sustainable transportation fee, which pays for your bus pass that you get on your student ID card, uh, building fees, all of that is lumped under that one number, as well as housing and meals. Below that, you have your indirect costs. So your textbooks, transportation to and from campus, personal costs. Those are the costs that we use in estimating a cost of attendance, but they're really going to vary from student to student. You have complete control over those costs. So transportation, for example, if you're choosing to rely on your bus pass that is included in your uh, fees cost, then your transportation cost might be much lower than a student who's uh, bringing a car to campus and going home every other weekend. So that's really going to be more on an individual basis. Again, personal and miscellaneous costs, those will vary as well. If you're going out and enjoying all the great, great food we have in Bellingham, then your personal costs might be a little bit higher. So these, um, we add these numbers up to get your total cost of attendance. This is an estimate. It's going to vary a little bit between students, but this is used in determining financial aid offers. So now, last thing I want to tell you about here is our honors program. Our honors program is a great opportunity for students who are really engaged in the classroom. Maybe you have a lot to add to the classroom discussion or you enjoy smaller uh, seminar style courses. Then I'd really encourage you to look into our honors program. It's not extra coursework. You can complete our general um, university requirements that all students have to do through the honors program. So it's not additional work. It's just a different way to satisfy those requirements. It's going to be a separate application. You do have to have already applied to Western before you apply to the honors program, but you don't have to have been admitted yet. So you can fill out your application to Western. And then once you submit that, immediately apply to honors as well. Uh, your admissions application materials will be used in determining admission to the honors program. So that's why you have to have already applied to Western and sent those materials in. You'll also send in a writing sample of your best written work, as well as a short essay on what you have to add to the honors program, why you'd like to be in the honors program. And you can see the deadlines below. Early action will be January 15th, regular decision March 15th. Our director of honors, Dr. Scott Linneman, is actually running um, information sessions via Zoom. So if you're interested in maybe joining one of those sessions to learn more about the honors program, connect with the wonderful people over at honors, then you can email honors at www.edu to sign up for one of those. And finally, just contact us. You can, these are some ways you can find some more information about Western. This is a bit of a general intro. So now you can dive in through our admissions website to find out more about on-campus housing, what program you're specifically interested in, all of that fun stuff. You can also send us an email at admissions at www.edu. We're happy to answer any questions that way. You can also even set up a video appointment, again, through our admissions website if you'd like to chat one on one, video chat one on one with an admissions counselor or just give us a call. We are answering our phones as well. I the two things that I want to leave you with are I hope that you one day will come visit campus and see all of the great and wonderful things that make Western unique for yourself. Get to explore Bellingham as well. And please uh, contact us if you have any questions. We're here to be resources to you and we really want to work with students. So just let us know any um, any question you're not don't think that you're bothering us we love to answer student questions so please connect with us and let us know how we can do to what we can do to help you out thank you for taking this time to learn a bit more about western and i hope that you will come visit us sometime and when you do stop by the admissions office to say hi have a good one